Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter and today we're gonna to talk about three of the most important settings on any camera. This video is actually from my G85 guide, but before you leave, if you don't have a G85, these three settings we're gonna be talking about are crucial on every single camera out there. It doesn't matter what you're shooting on. So today we're gonna to talk about aperture, shutter, and ISO, my process for using them together, how each of them independently make changes and affect your image. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. In this video, we are going to talk about shutter speed aperture and ISO. These are three of some of the most important settings on your camera and you're going to want to change them depending on your shooting scenario. Now, I understand that these three settings are not specific to the G85. A lot of people ask me about these settings and I think a lot of people use these settings improperly. So I'm gonna go through each one, talk about how they work and how they all work together because these are very interesting settings. First of all, all three of these adjust exposure and affect our exposure, so how dark or bright our image is. And each one of these three settings also has artifacts, whether that be good or bad. So it's really important to understand what they do individually and how to use them all together, specifically for shooting video. So what you're about to learn will affect every single camera you ever work on, um, and it's really, really important stuff. So the first setting we're gonna talk about is shutter speed. Shutter speed is how long light hits the sensor of the camera per second. So we'll get settings like 1 50th, 1 200th, and things like that. Um, so it's also going to affect how bright the image is. So that's how exposure works with shutter speed, but shutter speed also heavily affects our um, motion blur, and that's the artifact that you can control with shutter speed as well. So if we have a very slow shutter speed, we're going to get lots of motion blur. The problem is if you go too low, it, almost nothing will be in focus because even if I'm sitting still and talking to you, if I'm barely moving at all, it's not gonna look sharp because if you pause the video at all, it's going to look blurry. There's so much motion blur. The other end of the extreme is also true. So you can have such a high shutter speed that everything's very jittery. There's almost no motion blur and it's not very natural at all. Uh, the good news is um, we can control that and we can use it to our advantage. So if you're kind of going for a really dreamy look and we'll look at comparisons here in a second, um, you could do a very low, uh, slow shutter speed and that's gonna give you this kind of wispy, stuttery and uh, that could be used for a scenario like that. The other end is true as well. If you want a really high intense, um, uncomfortable feeling, very high shutter speeds can give that to you, a very jittery, intense vibe. Um, Saving Private Ryan is a great film where you can see lots of high speed stuff. So when they hit the beaches of Normandy, almost all that is shot in an insanely high shutter speed. So what should we set our shutter speed to? Well, actually there's a rule out there called the 180 degree shutter rule. Um, you can read about it more and how shutter speeds work in general. Um, and I'll have a resource for you guys there. But essentially the rule goes something like this. You take your frame rate and you double that and that is going to be the correct shutter speed. So as an example, if we're shooting at 24 frames per second, the closest we can get to double 24 is 50 on this camera. Now, why is this rule a rule? Well, um, it's been established to give the most natural cinematic motion blur. So it's very nice, very natural. It's not super jittery and high intense and a high shutter speed, but it's also not too low where it gets really uh, blurry and dreamy and, and useless. Now, even though it is a rule, you can break that and use shutter speed to get different looks. So this is really, really slow shutter speed on the camera. Um, even if I try to hold really, really still, it's going to look incredibly out of focus and uh, the motion blur is just ridiculous. But you could use this for a really dramatic, you know, dream kind of thing. Um, now I'm gonna show you a slightly faster version of this. Okay, so this is another shutter speed setting. Now I'm at 1 10th. It's a little faster, still way too much uh, shutter speed for normal shooting, but um, something like this is probably how they shot a lot of that um, Jason Bourne stuff where he's trying to remember and dream or dreaming and remembering, you know, his old self. So um, that can be another effect and you can use this. This is not as dramatic as the first one, um, but it's a little faster. So now let's go really fast and see what happens. 
Okay, so now we are shooting at an insanely high uh, shutter speed. I'm at one two thousandths of a second. So things are looking really sharp and crisp and just crazy jittery. Lots of, um, this kind of gives a really good high tension feel. So if someone's, you know, you're choking someone in the film, um, that's gonna be really interesting and then really bring up, you know, the intensity of your shot. So that can be something uh, you could do. I would not do this if you're just looking for a standard shot and there's just a conversation between two people, unless one of them is about to pull out an ax and kill the other. This effect also looks really cool with handheld motion. So if you're going for a really gritty shot, really high um, ISO and handheld jittery movement is gonna give you a pretty wild effect. So that is an overview of shutter speed. Now let's jump into our aperture. Aperture, unlike shutter speed, controls how much light hits the sensor. So uh, shutter speed controls how long it's hitting the sensor per second. Aperture controls how much. And the aperture is essentially blades inside of every lens that close down or open up. So it controls light, obviously, because we're you know clamping down and letting less light in or we're letting more light in. The different settings for your aperture are measured in what's called f-stops. And it's kind of confusing because the lower the number, the more open and more light you're letting in, and the higher the number, the less light you're letting in. So something like an f22 would be a really closed down lens, whereas an f1.4 would be very wide and large and open. And the artifact with changing how you use your aperture is going to be depth of field. If you have a wide open lens or a very low number on your f-stop, you're going to be letting lots of light in, but you're also going to be creating a very thin depth of field or what's called a shallow depth of field. And essentially this simply is, um, there's going to be less in focus in your shot. So you could use this to isolate things. You could focus on one particular part of an object and the rest of the shot is going to be out of focus. And a lot of people really, really like that look. Uh, the inverse is true as well. You can have a very high f-stop and close down the lens. You're gonna have less light, but you're gonna have more in focus. So if you have several objects you want in focus, a deep depth of field is gonna be a great way to make sure everything's in focus. So that is aperture. It's kind of dependent on the lens you have. Um, it's gonna change for every single lens. Now let's talk about ISO. And ISO essentially is a measurement on the camera and it controls how sensitive the sensor is going to be to light. So it's, it's a lot more straightforward than the other settings in that all the way down means it's going to be darker. And when you bring it up, it's going to brighten up the image, which is really nice to finally have a straightforward setting. The artifact for ISO is noise and grain. So the higher you bring it, the more grainy and noisy and unpleasant your image is going to become because we're essentially boosting or gaining up our exposure digitally with the sensor. So in general, you wanna keep your ISO as low as possible. And unfortunately, the G85 and most of Panasonic's uh, mirrorless cameras uh, don't do so well with low light and they aren't very sensitive sensors. It doesn't help that the sensors are also physically smaller than other cameras. So we're kind of at a disadvantage here. So you really wanna make sure your ISO is as low as you can get it. So those are the three settings. Quick recap, shutter speed, adjusts exposure. It also controls how long light is hitting the sensor per second, and it controls our motion blur. Aperture controls how much light hits the sensor. The artifact for aperture is deep depth of field or shallow depth of field. And ISO is sensitivity. So the higher it is, the more light we're going to have, more exposure. The lower it is, the lower exposure. And uh, the artifact for ISO is the higher you go, the more uh, grain and noise you're going to be introducing into your image. So. Those are the three settings. How do they work together? And if we're in the real world trying to film something, what do we do with them? Um, this is exactly the process I use every time I shoot something on a camera and I'm shooting video. The first thing I do is set my shutter speed to obey the 180 degree rule. Unless I want a specific dramatic look and I'm gonna be messing around with different shutter speeds. So. If I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, I'm setting my shutter speed to 1 50th or the little 50 on the back of the screen. And then I leave it there. I do not adjust it unless I'm going for a specific look. 
or unless I change my frame rate, in which case I need to adjust my shutter speed. This is good news because it simplifies things. We're done with that setting, we don't need to change it. The next step is to adjust my aperture. And what I'm gonna do for aperture is set it to um, the f-stop that I want artistically. So if I want everything in focus, I'm going to have you know a real closed down lens, or if I want very little in focus and very selective focus, I'm going to open up the lens. So that is the second step, is to set your aperture to achieve the focus look that you want. And that leaves the ISO, and I use the ISO as my variable or the way to control the exposure. Because the other two settings, shutter speed and aperture, are locked in, the ISO is going to make those adjustments. The problem with shooting video and really anything is that uh, even with that setup, you're going to run into two scenarios. One, even with your ISO all the way down, it's too bright. And then the other one is even with your ISO all the way up, it's too dark, or it's so noisy that you need to drop your ISO down. So how do you fix these? In the first scenario where it's too bright, we can use something called ND, or neutral density filters. And it's essentially just sunglasses for your lens, and that's going to darken the image, and uh, we won't have to adjust our shutter speed or aperture to make up for that. So if you're outside and you want razor thin, shallow depth of field, um, it, but everything's too bright and your ISO's all ready all the way down, you can use ND filters and that's going to help a lot. In the other scenario where it's too dark, we could raise our ISO really high, but it might get too noisy, so we wanna keep it lower, or it's already all the way up and it's still too dark. What do you do in this scenario? You could go back to your aperture and make sure it's all the way wide open. Um, if it already is and you're still having issues, you need to add light. There's just no way around it. So that is shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, how they work separately and how they work together. I know it's a lot of information, but uh, if you go back through it and do a lot of practicing, you're really gonna get a handle on how to first quickly change those settings and secondly, know how to use them. And that's going to, more than anything else, really help you with your filmmaking and the quality of your videos. So there you have it, three critical settings that need to be understood individually and together. If you'd like to learn more about the G85 or any of my guides, go to academy.dslrvideoshooter.com and I'm adding all my guides there slowly and have a lot more coming up in the future. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.